I got interested in observing the 80s because I teach a course at Sussex University called 1984 Thatcher's Britain. And we'd been using some oral history and we'd already been using some holdings from the Mass Observation Project and we'd been using some of the pamphlets that I'd found in the, in the library basement. And it made me realise that these were an incredible resource and that if we could bring these together in a more coherent way, this wasn't just going to be useful for my students, we were actually going to build a whole new archive of the 1980s. The Observing the 1980s project has made several differences to the way that we think about digitising material, um, particularly from the post-1981 phase, so the sort of living memory, the more recent material. Certainly it's made me think very differently about it. I think I was quite risk averse initially because many of the people who were writing in the 80s, so many of the people who we've digitised uh, their, their writings of, um, are still alive, they're still active, they're still, you know, very possibly going to come across it either on the internet or in research papers or however else others might use it. I was sceptical that they might be worried because initially the material that they had been sending into the archive had been through post or for, for email where it had been put in a box and put in a store and then got out. So I was worried that they might be concerned about the internet concerned about their um, writing being put online, concerned that they might um, think that they could be identified. But actually, I think we got a like a 90% response of overwhelming, yes, please do add my, my material to Observing the 80s. So I was really, really pleased with that. Well, I'm based in the politics department and a lot of the work that I do is about the way that ordinary people have understood politics, uh, the way that um, particular uh, sort of political debates have played out in real people's lives. And so to be able to use this, these resources is just going to be brilliant, especially having the, the sort of real oral footage to be able to just play that in a lecture would be wonderful. This project will be really useful because teachers will be able to um, download the uh, resources and they'd be able to uh, glue a number of resources together to make a really interesting and challenging uh, set of lessons for, for their students. I used um, the material from Observing the 80s in a presentation and project that I did in the autumn term for my MA course, People's Century. I really enjoyed doing it and I think one of the great strengths of the project is how visually engaging it is, which is something that's quite difficult to find often in um, giving presentations for history. Um, it was something which I think people were quite intrigued to see and wanted to look into more. I also think it's a really nice way of introducing people to the Mass Observation Archive that aren't able to get to it physically. Um, putting it out there on the internet means that people from all over the world who can't come to the University of Sussex or who can't get to special collections can have a look at that stuff. Um, I think the 1980s is something that's a little bit alien to people my age because we're just sort of under the bracket of people who have first-hand experience of it. So it's looking at these resources that gives us that, that way into it that we don't quite have, that people just a little bit older than us do. I'm a bit of a technophobe, I'm not very good with technology and actually the way that it's laid out, it's really easy to find things, it's really easy to compare different parts of the different aspects of the resources together and obviously because it's all put in together the different resources all on the same website it's really yeah it's it's helpful to use for people who aren't necessarily used to archives and things like that in general it's people's domestic outlook in regard to um, international events and and, and, politi and political events so it like it's quite interesting to see how people's in the, in the diaries especially um, to see people's reactions in terms of um, how much food they can buy, and how much, um, like, and what they what they're thinking in terms of like small micro events um, in connection with larger events. There's um, oral bites. Like recently, we've been studying the Falklands, and you can go and you can hear um, clips from soldiers as well as wives at home and the conflicting stories they heard. And then there's also reactions to things like big events that occurred, like Hillsborough, and um, the like IRA bombs and it's really great to be able to like actually listen to it as well as that there's also memoirs and handwritten notes which I think is always nice to see it handwritten. 
Last night I was listening to the oral history accounts from um, a soldier who was um, in the Falklands and he was talking about his memories and his experiences of being there and talking about the deaths of his friends. Um, I thought it was really powerful actually because you can tell from the emotion in his voice that he is still really deeply affected by it and that came across like really quite powerfully. It wouldn't have come across if it was just like an article written by someone about him. The fact that it was an oral history account, I've never looked at oral history before but I thought that was really, really moving actually and really powerful.